Hello everybody, uh, this is Yash. Um, I'm experimenting with a new software. It's called OBS Studio. Um, I'm going to try it out. Uh, let us see how this goes. Uh, this might be slightly better than our audio clippings that we did uh, last time. So just uh, see, uh, we'll see how, how this works out. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is minimize this video. Uh, you'll be seeing me at the bottom of the screen over here. And then uh, now I'm going to start projecting uh, the slides. Okay, so um, uh, the agenda for uh, this uh, session is to c continue and then complete uh, the sixth topic that uh, we had started uh, on prior to midterm exams, which is the topic of channel coding. And uh, this is the slides that you all should have seen earlier. Uh, but I have added some new section at the very end that we'll be going over today. So this presentation has divided into four sections. Um, I think uh, the first three sections are uh, what we have already discussed uh, prior to midterm exam number two. The fourth topic of linear block codes is what uh, we will be discussing today. So these are the slides that we have already seen. I'm just going to flip uh, over them. Uh, this is the overall diagram of a digital communication transceiver and um, this is uh, the source encoding. Uh, the topic of this particular set of slides is the channel coding. Um, we have seen that uh, data compression uh, kind of removes uh, the binary strings uh, in the set of 2 to the power m that do not occur and then it just encodes the remaining strings which are uh, falling in this typical set of size 2 to the power m times entropy. Uh, we also saw that uh, the data compression and error correction are dual to each other um, and uh, this is that duality diagram. Uh, the uh, uncompressed data has redundancies and because of that there are some strings in the overall set which never occur but we reserve bits for it. However, unfortunately, that does not allow us to do error correction, uh, but that is made possible by these channel coding schemes which int introduce back the redundancies in a controlled manner. So we have discussed all of this earlier. We have uh, talked about this single parity check code, uh, which is formulated like this, and this is the block diagram or the graphical representation of the SPC code. The rate of this code is uh, 1 over n, uh, sorry, n minus 1 over n. This is the decoding scheme uh, for the SPC codes. Uh, so this all uh, you should be familiar with. Uh, we also talked about the repetition code earlier, uh, whose code is 1 over n. And uh, the decoding of the repetition code follows this majority voting procedure, uh, which is uh, kind of diagrammatically illustrated in this slide, uh, in this particular slide, where we essentially take the majority vote out of n bits that are received and decide which bit was transmitted. So the decoding of repetition code should be very much familiar to you. You have worked on this in lab number three. Um, and so we won't spend too much time on it uh, at all. Um, in lab three, you also evaluated the probability of error, uh, decoding error for this rate uh, one-third repetition code and it takes a particular formulation uh, that is mentioned over here. So what this shows is that if suppose the binary symmetric channel has a flip over probability of 10% after the repetition code uh, it reduces to around 3% as it, uh, yeah around 3% which is quite a, a significant reduction in the probability of error. If you want the error probability to reduce further, then all you have to do is reduce, increase uh, this value of n, reduce the rate, and with that, the error probability expression takes this particular form. You may recall that this n plus 1 divided by 2 is equal to Tc plus 1, where Tc is the error correction capability of this repetition code. And uh, with that, uh, the probability of error can actually become even smaller than 3%. Uh, 
provided that we are willing to reduce the rate below one third. We have talked about the hemming weight and the hemming distance of uh, the channel coding schemes. Uh, and uh, we also have defined a parameter called minimum hemming distance. Uh, and uh, this is the minimum of all pairwise hemming distances between any two pairs of this channel code. Um, and we have seen earlier that this minimum hemming distance actually uh, is crucial in determining the error detection capability which we have denoted as T of D and error correction capability which is T of C of the channel code. In fact, uh, specifically if you recall T of D uh, is dh min minus 1 it's simply 1 minus uh, simply 1 less than dh min whereas T of C is given as uh, the floor function of dh min minus 1 divided by 2 and the way to see that is to start drawing hemming circles or what are known as hemming spheres uh, this particular diagram shows the hemming sphere of radius 1 bit around uh, this transmitted code word which is in the green and uh, then this diagram shows hemming spheres of 1 bit radius, 2 bit radius and 3 bit radius etc around this transmitted code word. Um, we have seen that the number of binary sequences of length n which fall in this innermost circle is n choose 1 which is same as n. Uh, the second circle has number of sequences which equals n choose 2 and the third circle outermost circle because it has radius of 3 bits uh, it has uh, number of sequences which are equal to n choose 3 and uh, suppose if our channel coding scheme has uh, error correction capability t of c of 3 bits then we should be able to draw this type of hemming spheres around each of these transmitted code words. Uh, these hemming spheres should have a radius of T of C, which is 3 bits, which is what is shown here. You can see that this sphere has a radius of 3 bits, this has also a radius of 3 bits, and so on. Plus, all of these hemming spheres uh, have to be non overlapping uh, in order for the error correction scheme to be able to correct uh, three bits of error and the way to do so is by doing minimum uh, hemming distance decoding okay so this is uh, just a very quick recap of the topic that uh, we have discussed earlier uh, now next what we are going to do is start talking about uh, the linear block codes uh, starting from this particular slide so at this point of time I'm going to pause and uh, save the file and uh, uh, let us see uh, how uh, this particular video has come out